Ramble Jam Podcast. Hi, I'm Bran, and I love literally anything Christopher Palaha puts his hands on. See, this isn't fair, because I'm not going to say I despise that. <laughs> not for the life of me. Uh, I despise Hallmark movies, but this guy's a champion. And uh, I'm, I'm the guy they're talking about. <laughs> What's up, <laughs> gentlemen? And this is, is the Deck, Deck the Hallmark, the Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Live! Live, live, live! <laughs> Oh, man. man. Our first, this is our first live episode, Chris, aside from the 24 hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're li- like, we, we're pushing this live. Is, this is the first one? The first that time we've, we've ever, ever pushed really live. pushed live. That's right. Yeah. How do you feel? I no. think it's only fitting, gentlemen, because right. um, I was your first guest. That's right. Ever. That's right. Yeah. So, this, so is, this, is a, this is a nice full circle moment here. It is. And, and I, I said this to you when we uh, got on the air, but you you cut your hair, uh, you, yeah. you 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 got a hat on. You look you yeah. look twenty look that guy. you look twenty five, Chris. I just I like how are you doing it, man? Um, and also, <laughs> can I ask what you shaved your head completely for? Like, what was the what what was that about? Yeah, you know what? It, we had gone through the pandemic. The whole world. This is no news to anybody. And I had what I had done was not gotten a haircut yeah. from. I started filming a movie and so I hadn't cut my hair from December of 19 2019 all the way until December 2020 and I had a beard at one point and I just thought you know I have a lot of hair um and while I've still while I can still grow it back pretty healthfully I think I just want to start fresh so for absolutely no reason whatsoever other than just wanting to start a whole new chapter I uh, I shaved my head and it was it was amazing and liberating I don't know if you guys have ever shaved your head oh, but yeah. if you haven't Go for it. I like it. Some motivational thoughts there about shaving Showers your Showers were the Chris. best. You just get in there and you're like, rah. Oh, that's man. it. You're done. <laughs> I have been uh, think like I've just, I, uh, I've been thinking about shaving my beard. I've, Shave I've, it. Shave I've it. been kind of going through, like oh, every boy. once, it just kind of keeps oh, popping boy. into my mind. I also, you know, about a year and a half ago, I toyed around with the idea of dying my hair gray. Hmm. That's you weird. You to match your last name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And so it's a good bit for people that don't know you, Brian. Uh, I I want them to say, "Hey, what's your name?" and me just be able to point and keep walking. Yeah. I want to have as little contact with people as possible. Seems weird, <laughs> Afro. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Paul Green did. He did his hair green, right? And he's like, hey. yeah. So I, I might not do that part, but I might shave my beard. I don't know. We'll mm. see. You know, you the problem though, guys, is that you have now become iconic to the people who know and love you. And I think when your book is released in the September, the whole world is going to see these three heads, boop, 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 and they're going to just identify the Christmas season with these elfish bearded. And if you shave, man, it's now it's brand. You're like Mickey Mouse at this point. That would be like Mickey pushing his ears back. Wow. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm looking for a change. I don't know who that Mickey Mouse is. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> But Mickey without his ears, that just is weird. I don't want That's it. disturbing. I don't want any part of Speaking that. Speaking of books and being an author, though, Chris, let's not sell yourself short here, buddy. Before our book gets to the shelves months from now, um, y- your book is coming out very shortly. In fact, in a matter of days, even. Uh, That's true. Author Christopher Palaha, Moments Like This, is coming out. And, and, uh, how excited are you? I'm, here's the book. I got to show it off. Look at that. Oh, man. Look at this. It's beautiful. It's mm-hmm. like how many pages I mean, are we I'm looking so, at? How many pages? Well, we're looking at 46 chapters. Whoa. And we're looking at. Uh, we're looking at. I'll tell you exactly the page count. We're looking at 285 pages. Okay. But um, don't let that intimidate you. You go to Hawaii and you fall in love uh, through these two characters, a girl named Andy. And a guy she meets named Warren. Warren. And um, and I lived in Hawaii. So a lot of it was just from my own personal experiences and places that I got to go to on Oahu that I thought were really spectacular. And a lot of tourists don't even know about or have really the time. Like if you're there for two weeks, chances are you're not going to go to the spots that I take you to in this book because um, you just don't have the time for it. But it was a blast, man. And I've never written a, a book before and got a chance to to just sit down and and write and it was fun. I want you to take us 
like just tell us how this happened. Uh, Hold on you're, a second. You're, what's up? I, I gotta say, for your first live show, you just edited, you just directed live. Like Easy we peasy, just cut, we There's, just cut to a <laughs> yeah. Brain is producing. I do this every. On the I do every, It's amazing, that, guys. Right? It's whatever. It's fun. yeah. Thank you, Chris. But I want back to you. I mean, uh, we just okay. got electricity in South Carolina 15 years ago, <laughs> so we're impressive. we're doing it, man. Um, how did this happen? Because uh, you you know you're just an you're just an actor. An actor. You're just an actor. I'm just a lowly thespian. How, That's right. how do you get to the point where you're like, I want to write. I want to write a novel. I want there to be romance. How do you get? Uh, how do you and Anna meet up? Like, how did how did it all happen? Give me all the tea. All the tea, okay. Chris. I'm gonna tell you guys a story. Please. So it was it was March of 2020. Okay. A global pandemic swept the face of the earth. Things had shut down. My kids were home from school. They were they weren't even doing Zoom uh, classes yet. Like they were not in school yet. You shut it down. Yeah, it was shut down. You remember this time? And I was outside playing football with my boys on the there's just green space by our house, and I have this neighbor. Um, his name is Javier, and Javier and his wife Anne were walking, and they said, and Javier said, you know, um, I have a friend of mine. She sits on the board of a foundation that I work with, and she's a romance author. She's written six books, and she's very interested in turning those books into movies. And she was thinking that Hallmark would be a good place to do that. And I said, well, and, and I had just opened up, so I have this production company called Podunk Productions. I've just directed my first short film called A Work of Art which uh, we're hitting the festival circuit this year, and I'm really, really proud of it. It's an anti-suicide, like, like this young girl, who teenager, who's contemplating suicide and, and, then, and then does not. So it's this really beautiful kind of pro-life uh, movie that I'm super proud of. And, and I have pitched a few things to Hallmark and to other places and have been trying to sort of just extend what I do so that I'm no longer just a lowly thespian, that I can actually, you know have a have a I'm just trying to you know broaden the reach a little bit so when Javier was like would you be happy to get on a zoom call with Anna and talk to her about her books I was like absolutely so we jumped onto a zoom call that Friday um, Anna I read her books like I'd read some of the stuff that she'd written and frankly it was about grief and loss and forgiveness and the love was really complicated and it was far too I think just far too complicated for Hallmark to be honest, like it was like, it didn't fit the matrix. Um, and I told her so much and I said, you know, you have these amazing books, but they'd be great for Apple plus or Netflix, or there are other networks. that if you'd like to try to sell them to, we can do that. And I'd be happy to partner with you on that. And I said, you know, one of the things when I've noticed going in and pitching ideas is that they love it when you own the IP and owning IP means that you have to go and buy the rights to a book. And I said, the best way to own the rights to a book is to just go ahead and write it yourself. I said, so if there's ever, if you ever have an idea and you just want to co-author with me, I would love to do that. Like if you want to take something to Hallmark, we can write something and tailor make it a book specifically for that Hallmark audience. And she said, literally on that first Zoom call, she said, well, you know, I'm working on this series. It's called From Kona With Love that my, my publishers and I have decided that I would write. And I'm about 12 chapters into the first book would you like to partner on that with me? And I was wow. like, are you? I said, hold on a second. You want me to partner on a whole series of books with you? Like we just met. And she's like, no, I really would like that. Like I think, and we had very Also creative, 12 like, chapters, like you're so, done at that point in yeah. my mind. <laughs> hey, it's 46, man. More it's than 46. 12, whoa. I, 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 I jump in um, <laughs> and I said, why don't you go talk to your husband and, and ask if it's cool that you split, you know, your books 50, 50 with this guy that you don't <laughs> really know yet. And let me think about it this weekend. And so we got back on another zoom call the, the following Monday. And she was like, I thought about it. I talked to my agent about it. I love it. My husband's like, we're all in, like, I'm in, I want to do this with you. And I was like, I'm in, I'm hundred percent in. So that Wednesday we had our contracts, all the paperwork was signed. And then we just started collaborating and spitballing. And then I had the unique pleasure of, of going to film in the UK this summer. And I had to do two weeks in quarantine. So I literally just spent two weeks at the Langley Hotel. And I had this weird fever. It was almost like a fever dream where I just wrote nonstop and just hammered out. How did it work? Did you like share a Google Doc and you were just kind of going back and forth? 
That's what we're doing for book two. Okay. But for book one, I would just write in my pages and then send her off a chapter. Huh. So then I would just, you know, sit, so, and each chapter, in, uh, each chapter is around like between 2,000 to 5,000 words. Um, and we would just hammer out these, I would just hammer this stuff out to her. And did, and did she that, know though? Like, what if you sucked at writing? What if you were like, bad? What if you were bad and you yeah, messed up like her name or smirched? I think it would have been the first and last. I think that I would have been scrubbed from the project. And when you say I have, I have, I have, I have a firm belief that they would have been like, oh, great. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. And then just sort of like done with it. This is good. This is good, Chris. Good, good, yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Like, this good is, job, yeah. Buddy. You, have you ever been in an, uh, at an audition, Chris, and at the end of it, the director or whomever's in there just goes, okay. <laughs> they do one of those. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, I was in an audition once, this guy named Mark. I won't say his last name, but Zuckerberg. He was, he was the you know yeah. He was the casting director, and I was there with Mimi. Leader was the director, and I did this audition, man, and I gave it my heart. Like I was there, and this guy Mark goes, "Make us laugh. Do a scene from North Shore." <laughs> and, I, and 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 I was like, "Do a scene from North Shore," and I looked at him like. You mother and and I said I, you know actually I said I don't know what you're trying to get at with that but like that was actually a really cool job I got to go live in Hawaii for a year with my family my kid was born there I was like and then Mimi Leader was like I like that John Pride but yeah he tried to like ridicule me in the moment Wow that was, that was, yeah that was a low that's brutal um I the, he said, sense and I'm always like mm. that Mark sounded a little bit like Jack Nicholson just a little bit. <laughs> Uh, when you did them, just make, make us laugh. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, there it is. That's what I was looking for. Um, hey, uh, can you turn to page one thirty six of your book and read us line four? Yeah, I can. We're gonna do this Absolutely. sporadically throughout the. Uh, I love this. Chat. Okay, line four. Just line yeah. four. Line four. That's it. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. Yeah, I said, lifting one foot straight up and rotating my ankle. Four hours in these heels was a little brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, there's a lot, a lot to unpack there. Uh, you're just going to have to pick up the book yourself, I think. To really. It was amazing. Was doing this. I did, I did the odds. <laughs> what are the odds? What are the odds there? I, I promise he, he, he didn't send us the book. He didn't send us a copy. That was amazing. <laughs> I, uh, I did the audio book, and the first whole part is from Andy's point of view, which yeah. is this young woman, and I'm reading it like Andy. So I'm sitting there reading stuff like that and i'm like well oh, i'm just gonna roll with it <laughs> look four hours in those uh, heels man you don't you know. so, so you're writing back and forth you're sending stuff pages <laughs> how long uh did that take going back and forth um we hammered out a book in literally the course of a month and a half i think wow wow we we, we crushed it Man. Like I said, it was like a fever dream. I mean, we I would every day, I mean, I was submitting literally two to three chapters a day and we just, I just, and then she would, she formatted it, Anna formatted it. So it's called Moments Like This. And what, what happened was we, we ended up, so these two people meet, Andy and Warren meet for whatever reason in Hawaii. And he decides to take her on a Grand Moments tour. And he's like, I just want to have these incredible moments with you and he takes her every Friday to a new place on Oahu. And they have this really beautiful, you know, it's a romance, but they're not telling each other about their past, uh -huh. who they are, where they're from. Like, they don't want to know anything and they both want fresh starts. And so it's a deal that they make. And then of course, you know, like life, the truth comes out. Mm, I love that. Yeah. Dude, I'm That's a really, I'm really cool idea. this movie uh, where the movie is shot out of sequence. Yeah. So like you get random, almost like, remember like 500 Days of Summer yeah. with yeah. Joseph Gordon-Levitt? Like these yeah. we, these trips aren't in chronological order and they leave some mystery to mm. the romance. Well, I like that. That's a cool idea. Yeah. You know, the objective is to take these, these books and 100% pipeline them straight into making movies out of them. And we're, I'm in fact, I'm buddies with Jason Momoa and we've created a character for book four that like is written for Jason because I was like, why, why not? Like, yeah. Why, go home and, and film a movie for us. He and, needs a break too. That guy, <laughs> he can't catch a, uh, he no, can't catch a break. Aquaman. No one wants to hire him. Yeah. Tough.
stuff sliding out there. I want to like from a I, uh, how does that kind of approach like wanting a book to become a movie change the approach of writing a book like a novel? I want like does it change like are you thinking more visually if that makes sense? Yeah, I think I think I'll tell you where it, what it I kept it within the parameters of being able to film it and stay true to the book. So we wrote it knowing that we would like to make a screenplay out of it, and therefore we didn't jump too far out of either for budgetary reasons or like location reasons. I made it, it's all Mm -hmm. self-contained. So that, so, so we have books one, so we have book one done, we're writing book two, and then we have three, four, and then book five. And we have all this stuff mapped out already. Oh, wow. And so books one, two, and five would be a trilogy of films. And then book three and four, if those, if we are able to do it at all, and they do well, then three and four would be these standalone, sort of independent, cool, one is super sexy, and then one takes place back in 1941. I mean, it's a really cool... Wow. And all of them take place in Hawaii. I don't know if you know this, but 1941 in Hawaii, pretty historical year, Chris. Uh, yeah, do you know why? Why? Yeah, Pearl Harbor, December yeah. 7th. Yes. There you go. December 7th, 1941. That's where the book, that's where book three starts. Wow, wow. man. So we, um, we, we have been, and all of it, guys, is your audience loves the Hallmark Channel. And I know you guys do too, Dan. And um, I know that I know that we have. And when Anna and I met, it was always specifically we had in mind that these movies would be sold and made for the Hallmark Channel. And I don't know if that's going to be the case at this point because they've gotten a little racier and a little more complicated than we originally started. Four, out four with. hours in those heels. I mean, four oh, hours in the heels is going to yeah. is going to bust a girl's legs. Yeah. Um, and um, <clears throat> we. Uh, we we made them though with the hallmark audience in mind so it's not like there's no lit porn i'm sorry to say <laughs> you're not going to get you know <laughs> descriptions of things yeah that's fair chris what about page like 212 line 6 i don't know let's find out <laughs> hope you're listening hallmark 212 L- line 6 212 line 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 Okay. She placed the coffee pot on a tray, took out some cups, and walked out to the veranda. Mm. Wow, Boy, really leave us man. wanting more there. Walked out to the veranda. What is she going to do out there? She never know. Probably I mean, be- she says something next in line seven, but I don't want to yeah. spoil no, it. No, no. <laughs> line six is line what I se- asked Line seven, really, it always gives it's it away. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I want to know also, like, the... the what was it like for you kind of figuring out how to write? Like, I know you've written stuff like with the I screen write, in mind yeah. before scripts or pitches yeah. and stuff like that. How long did it take you before you were really comfortable from like a novel perspective writing? Uh, I lot you, you're gone audio wise. What, what happened? <laughs> did you mute yourself? Did you mute him? No, I didn't. Mute. I haven't. I, my, my hands are here. Live TV, everybody. <laughs> What happened? You started messing with your device and then it muted. What are you doing? I can't. We can't no, hear I can't you, hear you, Chris. but you look great. <laughs> oh, and no. now he's gone. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? I'm gonna go. I gotta go back over there and make. You sure want me to vamp? Yeah, I want you to vamp live. Hey, guess what, guys? Um, if you listen to Take the Day Off, you already know this. But today, twenty years ago. 20 years ago today, my wife and I started dating. 20 years ago, 20 years today. ago today. Now he's on, now but, he's I, on we but have I, a feedback we have a feedback issue. issue. This is the joy of live. Right? It is. Uh, now I can't hear him. Chris, talk again. I'm here. Do you hear me? Gotcha. We're good to go now, Chris. The okay. Jo- the joy wow, of- this is exciting stuff. This is like the real deal, guys. That's right. This is why we don't go live, man. This is this is why. What we're happened? Here. Are you still? Are we still? Are we? Are we good? Are we still live? Yeah, we're, we're still, still live. live. Well, I got a link that was sent via text to my phone, not my computer, and so then someone just called me and it knocked me right out of your live thing. Uh, so in the meantime, I I silenced my phone. I went dead on my phone. So this shouldn't happen again. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Good Did you know. get my question? 
No. What was your question? So my question was, how long did it take you um, before you were really comfortable writing like a novel versus what you were, yeah. ca- had written what in the past with did. pitches and whatnot? I mean, here's the thing that I found this little answer in an interview the other day. Like, you know how some people sing in the shower? Yep. And they're sure pretty do. good at it. Like, yeah. They're like, they're actually legitimately good singers. They just never do it publicly. I feel like that was kind of me with writing. Like ever since high school, I've always been a short story writer. Um, I keep a journal. Uh, like I've been writing and I have a stack of journals at home, which are ideas and then short stories. You guys know I do like the little haiku things. Um, Did. Which I have shirked all my responsibilities for. for the. Ref. Sorry, guys. I'm sure you've moved on, but. That's where um, most people know you from is take the day off. The that's haiku right. Guy. Take the day so, off. Haikus. They're take just the happy to off. know you're Speaking alive. Speaking of which, I know you're in the middle of an answer, but you said you were in London at this hotel and you're in the zone writing. What was it like to be in that zone and have some idiot from South Carolina keep asking you to go do haikus out in a field? <laughs> yeah, but how great was it? How great was it? I got up at 545 in the morning and there were birds. Dude. The haikus like the were Langley? so, they were so, it was so perfect. Like my you, favorite was when the guy, uh, <laughs> there's a guy yeah, walking you know, behind you just like and by. you're just like, Hey, what's going on there? <laughs> so good. That was great, man. I know. And I just, I, 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 I could keep him up for you, but I feel like you guys are, I feel like we've, I, feel, I don't know. You tell me what you want to do with that. He clearly anyway. has moved on. And that's part like, we got a, a lot of haikus out of Chris, so we're not going <laughs> to ask for any more. I think that's fair. Speak but, for um, yourself. To, to, to <laughs> Brand's like, I'll oh, be talking to him later. We got to stay in the um, line. We, so when I, 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 to be really honest with you, Anna gets an amazing amount of credit. She, she gets all the credit. It was her invitation to join her. She became endlessly supportive and endlessly encouraging. I would send her a chapter and I was waiting, Dan, for the, like, this is a piece of shit. Like, you shouldn't write <laughs> ever again. And instead, she was like, wow, this is wonderful what else do you have and then i would just and she said just write whatever you want write just write so i had like the best partner in the world and it was it was a i just i mean it was a deeply pleasurable collaboration we've never met it was all on zoom we meet once a week on zoom so we would just spitball and we would talk and we kind of knew where the story was going to go and then we would just flow into this final destination you know working on book two has been really interesting because we're playing this game of table tennis. So I've, I've been in control of the male's narrative and she's been in control of the female's narrative. And we were telling these two separate stories. And now that we're merging, we're now bouncing back and forth and then they're going to split apart again. And it's just been a really cool process. I mean, it's really been, man. Yeah. Fun. I want to know from uh, your perspective as you're writing the, the male part, do you see yourself playing that character or do you kind of are you do you have some does someone else come to mind like are you writing kind of and then like someone else pops in your mind you're like that'd be cool if this person was was this this person if that makes yeah, sense. yeah i mean like for certainly for book one for the role of warren i um i saw myself i see myself as that character um and then for book two, I kind of thought you might be a good choice. Well, I was going to ask you, Chris, uh, you told us before and you'd written all of us parts in right. these books. So just like in what, do we have a pretty meaty role or is it just kind of a sideshow? No, it's actually <laughs> you guys. So, so Bran was going to be my guy. Like he's the, he's the, he's the of sort of the, the guy that the girl falls in love Classic with. good looks. No doubt right. about it. But Dan, uh, yeah. your character enters around chapter eight okay. so early on yeah and you're all the way there through the end and you actually pose a huge threat yeah um as he does Panda is the best friend that, yeah. that he's, you know un- unfortunately he's not here today to <laughs> to hear that great news but he um but he's in the book you know from day one until uh until almost the end and, and unfortunately something terrible goes oh, wrong. No. oh um, no sharks oh yeah. boy it gets some pain can't can't swim he, you know can't Hey, it's page Hawaii. page ninety six, line four. I love this. <laughs> I do. I really do. You're not getting this anywhere else, kids. I can tell you that right now. You're not going to get this anywhere else. Okay, page ninety six. What line? Line four. It's purely business. Mm-hmm. Let's wait for Appy to get back. It's not a big issue, really. Mm, it's not a big issue, really. 
He Whenever somebody said, says that, it is a big it issue. It is a big issue. Now, Chris, yeah. you, you as always, every time we talk to you, you got a hundred things going on. You're a you're a busy man, uh, you know, wanted in the field of acting, and you got Jurassic World in the can, uh, Dominion, I believe, is the subtitle. Uh, you've got a, a mystery. We can say that, right? We can say that. You can say that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it's on the IMDb. I just, I just you point. know, yeah. with at this point. But you've also got Mystery One One coming out in a week or two, uh, and I don't know the exact date, but it's coming around the corner. We're we're back uh, in the saddle. Twentieth? Uh, Does that sound right? It's twenty first, guys. 21st, it's yeah. March twenty first. All right, so less than three weeks away, or two and a half yep. weeks away. Yep. Very exciting about that, and you've got you've got that, and you got this book. You got a lot going on. Can you tell us a little it's bit March about March Madness? Mystery? March Madness, March, of course. March is a good. You you would think that March would be like. You know the greatest month in, in the world, and it is. Wow, um, and it is. Yeah, it really is. Can, um, tell us about the me. mystery one hundred and one. So, mystery one hundred and one, uh, the new episode is called, or the new the new entry into the anthology is called Killer Timing, and it's um, it made you yawn. It didn't make me, uh, Chris. I, you can see that no one else can see me yawning, but you, Chris. It's I, live. How I know, but, not? I, but, yeah, but you're, we, you're we, on the full screen, yeah, so you, you can't, can't see, see me. Okay. But I did yawn, Chris, and I, it's not because of you. We've already had lunch here, man. Uh, it was. I tell you what, it was the veranda line. It put me to sleep. I'm sorry, buddy. I didn't want to be that guy. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. Go ahead. Anyway, I'm, I'm interested. Killer timing. Uh, March 21st. Hallmark's um, Movies and Mysteries channel, which I got a sad text on Twitter. This young lady, she was like, it's a premium channel. I, I can't afford it. Um, so I'm, I can't watch any more of your Mystery 101. So it's on their little, you know, it's a it's I, I call it their premium channel, but it's just you got to pay extra to be on to, to watch hallmark movies and mysteries um and so if you don't have that you won't be able to see it but it's been i gotta be honest man you and i were talking before the show and you gave a little nod to the quality of the of the of the series and it's something that jill wagner and i have tried to do from movie one which is create something that's a little darker a little more um just something that you, you would you would find on any network like if you were watching cbs or if you were watching so that it you know what i mean like it, it defies that the the genre that hallmark is so famous it feels for really in a, intense in like it, it feels intense like your performance you're giving a very intense detective performance like it doesn't feel like it's been you know that they've they've held any bars so to speak uh yeah. or barred any holds uh, and there's you know. a cool story on this one um when i was in college at nyu i was walking up uh, a city street ninth avenue with a friend of mine named Catherine, and i was on her right and she was on my left and i switched places with her and i said aloud i don't know why but i feel better on this side of you and two blocks later a guy was trying to burn his restaurant down and the building exploded wow and we were caught in this blast and i eclipsed Catherine from all this glass we both ended up in the street long story short 120 stitches later so i told one of the executives at hallmark at a lunch one day heather and she was like would you mind if we used that in the uh in the movie because the weird thing was in real life after we blew up we got into a taxi cab and i asked Catherine, i was like will you kiss me and she was like what? And I was like, yeah, I just, <laughs> and so I asked her to kiss me while my face was gushing blood, because I think if you want to jump into the subconscious, I just needed to know that I was alive. Man, that um, you must've been in shock. That is uh that is some kind of story. Is that from the book or is that real life there? <laughs> no, no, this is my real you life. You had story. 120 stitches on your face. I had 80 in my face right here. And then the rest on the hand and the rest on the wow. wrist. Wow. Yeah. 120 stitches. So in the cab, and you are spitting game. You are bleeding out of the side of your face, and you're like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what I got here. I'm gonna shoot my exactly. shot." <laughs> exactly. So if you can't do it heard, now, when can he? You know? Wow. So she heard. So Heather heard this story, and she's like, "Can we put that in the movie?" So you'll see my guy get blown up, and then you'll see my guy lay a fat one on wagon. Man, no. that is just fantastic stuff. <laughs> you know, the first time we had you on all the way back in 2018, I said we should do a podcast called Cool Stories with Chris. Three years later, 
I I do not stand corrected. If that if we've not heard that gem of a story I, yet, I, Chris, we, I've heard, we've heard that story, but not the kiss part. The kiss part. The kiss is, is a rev, is a rev, like, hundred and eighty some I stitches. I don't talk about the kiss. I don't talk about the kiss that much. But yeah, that, that happened. Eighty <laughs> some stitches, pre stitches. You're borderline. Pre stitches. I've got a I've got a, a paper towel wadded up, yeah, and jammed into my face. You are like. Like <laughs> borderline Harvey Dent in the Dark Knight territory right now, and you're like, "Hey, hey, baby, what's you, what's going on?" Like what, that's what's what, go- what that Chris is- leaves out of that story is she jumped out of the cab. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no way, man! That blood is, all over you. That's bonkers. That is what do you just- think? Takes me for? Man. <laughs> and then six pence none the richer started playing in the cab. Yes, man. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a whole, a whole blood thing. coming out my face. I'm <laughs> scared. Hey. Man. Blood is gushing, baby. <laughs> yeah, he gets it. He, he gets, gets it. it. Uh, so you got Mystery 101 coming out, uh, which I'm Mystery assuming we'll see some Twitter. You, you got the you got the book. You're wearing the hat of the Ooh, fad yeah. sweeping the nation, Palaha Chautauqua. Um, those are fun, man. Those are a ton of brand. Occasionally stops I'll by pop and, in every and once in a while and um, let, let him know that there is a guy watching. So some, right. sometimes you, uh, <laughs> can you believe what that's turned into, man? Like that, I can't, it's unreal. I really can't. It's unreal. Yeah. It's unreal. And it's been, you know, my kids, I'll be like, guys, I got to go live. And they're like, what are you doing dad? And I'll do my little Palaha Chautauqua live on Instagram. And afterwards, it, 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 this was around November. Both of my teenage sons were like, Dad, we're really proud of you. Like, you've created a community of people that, like, they really, like, you make them feel good and it inspires people. And, like, it's like a real community. And I think in the face of the pandemic specifically, when people were isolated and at home and were having a really hard time finding other people to talk to, I just felt this need to push live one day. And I hate... I, I'm an actor, it's what I do for a living, but this whole idea of celebrity and all the bullshit, and you see so many actors like who keep cashing in on the thing that they do. I, I've never known how to work social media because I don't, like you say, stories with Chris, or conversation, whatever that, your podcast would be, which would be fun, and we have a ton, but my currency as an actor is significantly less than anything I can offer as a human and my story includes my faith. It includes, I mean, there's so many aspects that have nothing to do with me as an actor. And uh, when the whole world thought that it was going to die because of COVID, my response was just to go live. And I wanted to see how people were handling it. I wanted to talk to people and connect with people. And it really did. It turned into something um, fun. My kid wrote a theme song with me for it. And we, we show up every Sunday night. I show up every Sunday night at 4 p.m. on LA time, and I push live, and whatever happens, happens. I've had some cool guests like uh, Gabby Reese and Tim Tebow and uh, Rain Wilson have joined me. So it's been Brand. it's been fun. <laughs> Brand, you, Brand. Right. sang the sang a song, you know the the theme Brand, song. You you crushed my theme song. It, you knocked it out of the park to such a degree that I started tinkering with how I sing it. Where I'm like, well. That sounded good. Brand's got, got that him. upper register, Chris. He he's got the upper register. You just can't mess with that. You can't mess with it. That's right. And the guitar, the guitaring of it. Was, yeah. It was that was choice. Come People on. can see it if they go to Palahaha on Instagram. They can see your 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 rendition of the song. It, it's a good song, and I I it took me a while to get the the wording down. Like it's there's a it's like it, I, I it took me a while. So kudos to to you and your son for knocking it out of the park. Thanks, man. Making a special song. It's easy to just say words, but to, yeah. to make and, them fun. And I, I will say this. Uh, you know, we joke a lot on this show, and we will continue to do so. But uh, Chris Christopher Palaha is not joking around about uh, ha- making sure his humanity is more important than his celebrity. Um, months ago, someone sent someone uh, that I, a friend of mine from Texas sent me an article uh, of this girl who had this condition that no one could figure out in the hospital and they had to spend just months on it in the hospital and their favorite thing to do is Hallmark movies and they couldn't watch them and they were trying to figure out how to watch them and trying to figure out what to do and they were talking about the people they liked and one of the first names they mentioned obviously was Chris Palaha and this person in Texas who went to school with my wife 
was like best friends with my wife, she texted me and said, hey, thought you would like this and I don't know what you could do about it. I texted Chris um, and, and just said, hey, these people really love you and they're having a hard time. Uh, and, and I just figured you'd want to know. This guy, without hesitation or without any worry of, of what it meant for him or anything, took time out of his day and shot a full video and, and, and with their full names and, and, and what just wished them well. And, and, and it's just the kind of guy you are, man. And I, 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 I know we, we, we joke a lot, but I mean, God bless you, dude. Like for being someone that cares about people more than cares about a profession. Uh, cause those people don't come around too often and, 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 and you're just one of a kind, man. We really do appreciate it. Thank you. I don't, Thank you. You don't know what to say there. I get it. I understand. I'm, which is I'm, I'm, I'm which is fun. Dan. Can you I'm go? Speechless. Can you go to like two seventy two line nine for me? <laughs> uh, is, is it two seventy two? Is that out of the line? book? Is that like the last page of the book? If, no, we're still okay, good, man. We, two, got, we got tons of, tons line, of words. line nine. Line nine. Line nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. <clears throat> um. I bet on the wrong things and lost everything. I gained it all back when I came here. Wow. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That's getting real. You never buy the same horse twice. You don't you know buy the mean? same horse twice. You wouldn't do it. No. You wouldn't buy yeah. the same horse twice. Um, yeah. We haven't talked to you on this show since Wonder Woman. And uh, this is what I want to ask you about Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> There were articles after the fact um, that pointed out that. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. I want to see this. Let's so see what, these verbal gymnastics. So Gal <laughs> uh, gets you know back together with the guy, Chris the, Pine. Chris Pine. Yeah. But Chris, but Chris Pine is is uh, is is uh, you is you is taking over your it's your body, your body. body. That's right. Yeah. So it is it, implied that there is. Um, Relations. Boot, boots knocking. That's right. <laughs> right. Where are where are you? <laughs> where are you in that moment? Like I know you don't remember it, but it's still you in the act, yeah. is it not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the body. Did and, you? And, did and, and, I want to know? Did, did you read it and think? Huh. I mean, I had conversations with, with Patty Jenkins, and I said, "So where is? <laughs> where am is, I? Is handsome man?" And I yeah. asked also said. I said, do we name him? And she's like, no, I think it's funny. Like we, I think we don't name him because it's, it's funny. Like it's funnier. And I was like, okay. And then, um, she just loved the idea of him being uh, the handsome man. And I said, well, so where does handsome man go? Do you want him to recognize her at the end? Is there any, she's like, nope, there's no recognition. And so when I saw the movie at Warner brothers, the head of publicity, she said, you know, I, I pitched to Warner brothers and to Patty, we should do a little after movie scene where your character is like on a beach somewhere or like <laughs> just in Valhalla or wherever you want to put this guy like momentarily <laughs> displaced but I have a theory guys Do you want to hear my theory? I love, I love it to hear the Bring theory. It. <laughs> absolutely okay so so it was the summer uh, of 2018 and we all know it well because that's yeah. when we met that's right that was the big that was the big kickoff of this fantastic four friendship that's right um uh, and I got a phone call that I got cast and Patty Jenkins wanted to get on the phone with me. And she told me very briefly about the idea of there was going to be a wishing stone. It was like the monkey's paw story where when you make a wish, you get it, but you don't exactly know what you're getting. Um, and I was excited. And I talked to my son, Micah. I was like, Micah, because he's a huge MU fan. He loved Marvel comics. Yeah. But he was also like into DC a little bit. And I said, let's go on, let's do some research. Let's figure out like who in the DC universe is up to no good. Like who can shape shift, who can deceive, who can like, you know, who can do this. So Micah goes online and he discovers that there's a character in the DC universe called the Duke of Deception. So I start doing all this Duke of Deception research before I got on the phone with Patty Jenkins, before I understand, like, before we have a conversation about the character. And um, I do all my homework. And then Patty and I have our call. And she's like, so do you have an idea? Like, she's like, do you, and she's like, I can tell you certain things. She's like, what do you think? And I said, well, does this have anything to do with the Duke of Deception? Like, is, am I the Duke of Deception? 
And she was like, oh, that's so weird. She's like, no, but you, the Duke of Deception created the stone. So my thought is, oh boy, what if the handsome man is the Duke of Deception? Yeah, boy. And he was like, I know how to, I know how to like hang out with Wonder Woman. I'll just let Steve take over my body. I love it. And so, you know. I love it. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Um, were you, I mean, it was better than anything I got. I mean, I, I just, I mean, from a standpoint of, cause I was, I mean, I was doing some just straight gymnastics trying to get to the point where I understood like, he's not, he doesn't remember it, but he did it. Like I, that just a little, it's a little wild. Do I get, do I give you an like, attaboy? Also, I don't know. Yeah, people, yeah, there was no consent. I was I, for, for a brief moment, for a white hot moment, I was an internet, uh, my character, yeah. I wasn't. Handsome man was quite the, uh, quite the conversation well, on the old Twitter. That was my next question is, I mean, Variety, Chris, not like, not some magazine that Brandon and I named Variety that we print <laughs> in the office, like the Variety magazine. Like it's been, like is, they wrote a whole piece on you. Yeah. Like, were you yeah. prepared? Were you anticipating no. anything like that happening? No, my my star meter shot up to the top. It's the highest it's ever been. Yeah. I, like, I mean, I was like, what ha what's happening right now? And my buddy Colin Trevorrow, who's who's the director of uh, <clears throat> Jurassic World, he called me the next day and he's like, so the movie came out on December 25th. He called me on the 26th and was like, dude, welcome to the party. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like. I went online to look at Wonder Woman. He's like, your character is like, everybody is talking about your character. And I said, what do I do? And he's like, you say nothing, you do nothing. It's not <laughs> about you, it's about your character. I said, he, he said, just you write it out, <laughs> write it out. But now how many people when Jurassic <laughs> World finally comes out in like 2036 or whatever, like when that movie comes out, are people gonna go, is that a handsome man from That's Wonder exactly Woman? That's exactly what Colin said. He's like, he's like, you're gonna show up on screen. And you're like, hey, there's handsome man. Do you get? Do you have more? Do you have more scenes? Do you have more screen time in, in Jurassic World than you did as no, handsome probably, man? Probably, probably not. To be honest, I mean, I wish I could say, yeah, it's my whole, it's my dang movie. But um, my character is, I'll, I'll, I, the only thing I can say is that he carries the same weight, um, in 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 both stories. Does that make sense? Yep. So yeah, size, it's an important same, role, but yeah, like same, same deal where you, you can't get a, away from him, but at the same time, he's not, it ain't his movie. Yeah. Do you, uh, inadvertently knock books with, uh, Chris Pratt in this movie? Like, is that kind <laughs> of your thing, your thing now? It's really weird. A, a dinosaur takes over <laughs> my right. body. Je Je Jessica <laughs> Chat, or is it, is it, who is it? I, I don't don't Chester. Bryce, Bryce Dallas Howard. She like takes somehow is in Chris, like Chris's body. <laughs> and it's like Pratt wakes up. Laura, Laura Dern, Laura Dern takes over my yes. body. And then, uh, <laughs> Sam, so it's Chris Pratt and Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. Oh yeah. gosh. Dude, Dare to dream. Jeff Goldblum. What a national treasure. I can't, uh, this, is what I, 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 this is what I want to ask you. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up here shortly. But okay. if I were to uh, gun, gun to head, Favorite Goldblum story from set. Oh man, I have to hear this. You guys, I, did I ever told you this yet? He was my neighbor. No, stop it, Chris. Lane. You are we, lying to me. We what? We were, we were. I was his upstairs neighbor. Jeff Goldblum lived below me and my wife and my kids. And every night, my kids would be jumping on the floor oh. and be like, "Guys, you're gonna wake up." <laughs> 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 Don't wake up, Jeff. <laughs> no. And then, and then every once in a while, I'd hear him playing his piano. You could hear it rise up through the floor. Jeff was, um, Jeff was one of those guys who I'll tell you a really cool story. Did you uh, before you do that? Did he remember you when you got on set for for Jurassic World? Did you say, hey, hey, neighbor, like, how's it going? Did he remember you? No, dude. He and I are like, we're we're we know each other. We're like, I used to walk through the courtyard while they were all having dinner, and I always felt obligated to sit and talk for a minute. <laughs> There, his wife and I were on a, we, we ran, so there was a girl named Destry Spielberg, who's Steven's daughter. Um, Emily Goldblum is Jeff's wife. And I, we would go running through the black, we had a team, we had like a run team and we would go three times a week and run through black. You want to know what a great like setup of a joke is. So it's uh, <laughs> me, Steven Spielberg's daughter and Jeff, Jeff Goldblum's, Goldblum's wife. wife. We're running That's through right. the woods. Yeah. We're running through the woods. <laughs> That's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Great Jeff Goldblum story. 
Go ahead. Great Jeff Goldblum story. I want to hear. The street fell. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, the mystery one on one right there. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. Um, so Jeff. Okay. So here's the coolest story. So I'm about to go on my run, and we're at this Langley Hotel. And if you look it up, Google it. There's this big, beautiful, grand staircase. There's a fountain on the dri circular driveway. There's this big, beautiful, grand staircase. And then you go into this building. And I walk out and I see Laura Dern and I see Sam Neill. And they're both standing on this balcony overlooking the fountain. And I kind of come up behind him. I'm like, hey, guys. And down below is Jeff Goldblum. And he's just arrived. And it was truly this, like, I, you know, it was a, it was a movie magic because I was a kid when I saw Jurassic Park. I mean, Park. the three Park. of those together, that's, that is yeah. my, like, I'm literally, I can't sit still right now, Chris. No, and it was one of those moments where I, like, wanted to grab a camera and be like, can I get a picture of this moment? But I didn't want to be that guy in the first impression be like, not, not of me and them. I wanted to just. I just want you guys. Yeah. Moment. What if you just walked up and just started humming this thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> What's the, where's that music coming from? <laughs> but I literally, I turned around and I walked backwards and I saw the whole thing get smaller and smaller. And it was him, and he had like, you know, all this staff. It was like watching a prince show up because all the staff was out to greet him, and then you had. It was a very cool, Man. the whole experience was amazing. And, you know, because of the pandemic, we were stuck at the Langley. Like, we yeah. couldn't move. So Friday nights, we were on the terrace. Everybody, we would just tell stories. Saturday nights, everybody. And then, of course, people would chill out because Sundays were the night before work. And people were working throughout the week. But every Friday night and every Saturday night, the fact that it was the pandemic meant my wife and kids were able to come and join me. That's awesome, The dude. producers are like, it's scary. Why don't you bring them here? We have the space be with your family so my kids went and they did zoom school uh they were in london doing live zoom with their class at four o'clock in the afternoon they'd start school and they would work until 11 30 at night <laughs> wow and everyone in their class was like why is it dark where you are that's like, great in England. like it was a cool is it was that, a really cool moment is that chris pratt behind you what's going on yeah. wow <laughs> Well, it's funny is my kid, so Caleb, my, my oldest boy, sings and plays guitar. And it's something that he's really gotten into. And he writes music. He's written 13 songs. And they're, I'm his daddy, so I'm biased, but they're really good. Dude, I was going to text you. I watched the song you posted yeah, for Valentine's too. Day that he that he wrote my, for his school. Right? I, I it's a really good it's song. It's good, but I couldn't get past the fact that he literally, he looks just like you. Yeah. Like he looks like. I know, it's crazy. It's unbelievable. It's, yeah. He's also, a great. Yeah. Great, great song, Thank great you. voice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he's, I'm really, really proud of him. So we did a, so Scott Hayes, fellow actor in the movie, has a theater in Los Angeles. He needed to do a performance to get a grant from LA. And he asked Caleb if he, if he would be the opening act for his girlfriend, Taylor, who then played. And they were going to, you know, do the thing live on Facebook. And so Caleb plays in front of Bryce Dallas Howard, in front of Laura Dern, in front of <sighs> Jeff Goldworm, in front of Sam Neill, in front of all the producers, everybody. All of the makeup teams, and we all lived at the Langley. Stunt guys, standards, everybody. We were all living in the Langley together. And Caleb does his first performance, and it was like 50 people. And afterwards, the only person who wasn't there was Chris Pratt, and I'm getting to the story. So afterwards, everybody comes up, like Laura Dern said, you know, Caleb, I get to tell people I was at your first concert. One day I'll get to tell people. Like, it was a really big Man, moment for him. That's Bryce awesome. Bryce Dallas Howard came up with a camera, and she's like, I want to interview you. Where are you from? How old are you? When did you? So then the next weekend, Chris is there, and everyone said, Chris, you got to hear Caleb play. He's really good. And Caleb grew up watching Chris Pratt as Galaxy Quest, Star-Lord, and I've never seen my son nervous. Like, he had just done this performance for 50 people and yeah, crushed it. Way different. And here he was with Chris Pratt, and he was like, <laughs> like, trying to get the nerves out. And we were watching him play. We're like, yeah, that's, what's going on? And then Chris took his guitar, and Chris played a song, yeah. and he wrote, and he sang, and then Caleb afterwards was like, Star-Lord played my guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that is starstruck. It was fun. I mean, you just can't make that kind of stuff. It's up. so funny. That's I'm so watching uh, Everwood right now. Treat Williams is in it. Fantastic. Yes. The venerable. Uh, but Chris the Pratt's in it. Like it's his. Like I think like his first long. That's his first gig. Yeah. yeah. It's so funny to watch watch him in it. It's great. Man. But man, dude, treat, that treat's is, amazing too. Uh, that whole thing is unbelievable. Wow. What a story, man. 
We're going to do it one day, Chris. You guys Chris. got the best of it. I don't talk about that stuff, and I haven't yet publicly. Cool stories um, with Chris. It's happening. I'm just telling because, you. Because, yeah, it was, a, it, was a cool, it was a cool experience. Man, that's fantastic. Well, your book is coming out. Um, can pe- People can buy it, right? Like, I know, like, the, you, you said the first, uh, first batch sold out, but there's more coming, so you can order they were it, right? Playing, they're hot off the press. You hot. can get it at iBooks. You can get it at Amazon. Anywhere that books are sold, you can pick up this beauty. And it, it's, it's, uh, we went, we went to great care about how it, so it feels really good Yeah. and it looks beautiful. So it if you does. put this on your coffee table or your bedside stand, um, it's going to add, add a nice pipe. I might show up. I might pop out of the pages. You never like, know. Be a portal. Can't guarantee it, but it's worth a shot. I, yeah. I am more of an audio book guy. Um, and that's not out yet, but it's coming from what I understand. Correct. It's coming June. It'll be hey, June or July this summer. We're going to pop mm. that up. I don't want to wait though, so I might order a, a book. I might. I well, might. You should. I you might should. just. Well, I'll probably order it just to support you, and yeah, then I'll still wait for the audio book. But yeah, I'm very excited. Man, so, so I, I'll excited. be honest. I'll be honest. The way that that you explained it is very. It sounds like a really compelling. Yeah. Book, so it's actually good. I'm. Hey guys, listen. You do things in life. We all know this. There are certain jobs you take because they're waving a check at you, and you're like, eh, "Okay, I'll go do this." Sure. When Anna, when Anna um, offered this experience for me, I was terrified, excited, and totally inspired creatively. And I am really, really proud of it. Like we, there, there are moments in this book that um, that she wrote, and but that I wrote that I am really, really proud of. Like from an artist, just a storyteller point of view, and it was a it was a, it's just a, it's a really cool thing. So I'm, I'm, the whole process has been uh, extraordinary. And I, I really do it. want to share with people. So go buy a book. If you're do it. moments like this, March, Gomez, March 9th, Falaha. March 9th, you're not going to want to yeah. miss out on it. And then March 21st, mystery 101 gives you just enough time. If you haven't seen any of the mystery 101s to, uh, binge those somewhere i don't know hallmark i hallmark. think doing a marathon uh, i would they, they assume so yeah tight hold on them I, w- it's in the I vault. wish you could see them at, uh on apple tv or something but uh, they haven't it's, made them available yet. it is astounding to me how uh hard it is H- to hallmark find makes a, it very difficult movie. it's like the disney vault uh <laughs> yeah but all of their movies yeah but <laughs> all of their movies and no one has any inventory of the vault <laughs> that is that's yeah. what it's like the vault's They've missing the key, they're like where where yeah. is it the vault yeah, yeah. is just space it's yeah. just like a nebulous like nobody knows where anything thing is um chris god bless you we sir you, as always we love you you're the best man thanks for coming on and, Thank and you, sharing Dan. your time Thank you, brandon and, uh, good, and, good uh, luck with the book and and mystery 101 and jurassic world for that matter which i don't think it really needs it but good luck <laughs> we'll Thank see you. if anyone goes to see it yeah um I mean, you and uh and also i mean literally we've been talking to you for three years now Wonder Woman finally came out, so congratulations. Hey, good job, buddy. I, I, we, thought it, we thought it was a very long joke, but it came out, yeah. so congrats. Honestly, like, I mean, you know. <laughs> well, what's, yeah. It was, it, it was, you were there at the inception of that. We like, were there. I, I, and, and, hey, now for the record, yep. uh, uh, Brandon gets huge kudos. That's right, didn't tell anybody. Didn't tell anyone. Because you kept your mouth shut. I had signed an NDA, and before I understood the full weight of what that meant. <laughs> you were so excited. You were blabbing the brand. Friend, I just gotten the job and I told you, I was like, dude, this is what I did. Dude, you had ju- like just found out. I just found out. And then I called you and I said, bro, I just, dude, I've signed an NDA and you got a promise. And you did, you were amazing. And you're, you guys are people that could have spilled the beans and you didn't. So you have my trust and my gratitude. And I'm sorry, Warner Brothers, that I, that I, that I didn't, uh, that I was, just a young but don't worry idiot. i won't tell them anything about the steven spielberg movie that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what yeah. oh man already, <laughs> christopher nolan shot a secret movie starring christopher palaha that's wild guys, guys. unbelievable i'm sorry man what are we gonna do you just won't be able to hear any of the dialogue yeah, there's um, no more running in the woods no with more. goldblum yeah. and spielberg <laughs> yeah. i can tell you that right now um, <laughs> all right, buddy. We love you. We'll talk to you soon. And may we be the first to wish you a Merry Christmas. You are. See you guys. That's the Thank Hallmark is a Bramble Jam podcast recorded live. And yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina is produced by Brandon Gray. Set decor by Plum Haywood Mall. For more information on all Bramble Jam podcasts, you can go to BrambleJamPodcast.com. For more information on how to listen to Deck the Hallmark ad-free, you can go to BrambleJamPlus.com.